Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome to Fantasy Forecast for Saturday, November 26th, 2016. You can see today's cash game lineup in front of you. We don't need to go through results anymore. Um, so let's just get right on in. At the point guard today, Russ Westbrook. God, it gets old and boring winning money, doesn't it, guys? Mike Conley for your point guard. Let me explain real fast. This is a short slate, guys. Real short. So, you know, we're not really concerned or stressing too much on, you know, there's some last minute value things that are popping up here and there. But other than that, as long as you kind of take advantage of it, this should be a very smart, sharp day to take some money away from some pros. Or at the bare minimum of games where we're going to have enough to get some differentiation from other people, we got some high priced studs on the slate that you can avoid and basically let other people get tanked on today. So, I'm all over today's slate. I'm betting a normal amount today. I'm not betting a light amount. I'm not betting a heavy amount. It, a short slate, you really don't ever want to go heavy unless it's, it's a true lock. But today is a normal betting day. Um, moving on. Westbrook. Why Westbrook? Why in the hell not? Today is the day a lot of people are going to think, I should fade him today. It's the second day of a back-to-back. -back. He just put up 70-something points. It's Detroit as an opponent. Let me guys ask you this. Do you see anyone else that's going to give you 60 points today? Guaranteed. Anywhere. So for a cash game, to me, this is this the biggest no-brainer ever. The guy gives you 55 to 60 fantasy points. It's a tough slate, period. Look at the opponent next down. John Wall playing San Antonio. Oh, boy. Guys love taking those San Antonio bets, don't you? Pop still finds a way, even with the... A somewhat average team on both offense and defense now. I don't know what else to say. Pops is, is a good good opponent. And I don't see John Wall busting out his highs. He's going to do that against a Denver team like Westbrook did yesterday. Just because Westbrook hits a high doesn't mean he's going in for a low today, guys. Take the 55-60 points to the bank and run. Um, your other choices, yeah, John Wall is definitely a tournament choice. He could get hot on scoring. Same with Steph Curry, Minnesota, faster-paced game. You're going to need some exposure to that game, and I have some. Um, Kemba Walker is an okay choice against New York. The problem is, I mean, looking at their... This is the issue. If Batum is out, you know, and they lost on um, Williams last night in the middle of the third. Um, he kind of strained, but he's not going to play today. That's for sure. But, I mean, beyond that... If they lose Batum, too, Batum's the only ball handler those guys have. I mean, they're going to really be forced on Walker to put some extra points. So anyone that has scoring production on that team is going to be forced to put a little bit more up if they're going to have any chance of hanging. And this is my problem. I don't know if they're going to have a chance of hanging anymore. I think this has blow at risk now, even with Charlotte at home. So that's just my opinion. We'll watch and see. You can look at Walker, but I think it's an extreme GPP choice, which would be very low-owned. Um, go down to Rubio, possibly. It's another player for Minnesota against, um, you know, Golden State, which is a fast-paced running game, and Minnesota won't do, you know, that game's going to go high. Whereas that's going to be a 110 to 120 game for either of those two teams, somewhere around there. Um, I'd be avoiding D. Rose today. We all saw the important form. You can basically take Chicago and New York players and look at their box scores from yesterday and get a good feel for what's going to happen today. There'll be some aberration. They won't be as many assists or steals or rebounds or points for every, you know, they all don't do the exact same. But when you average all the fantasy stats together, they generally do do somewhat same against similar opponents in the same season. So unless there's some dramatic change in the game flow, and there isn't any really, unless they lose Batum on for Charlotte. So we're watching that news carefully with this lineup. I'll explain how I've taken advantage of it for now, but I'll be ready to move on a dime's notice if I get news that he's playing. Tyler Johnson, if you don't have the money for a Conley like I've put into this lineup, Tyler Johnson is the man. He took over the game against Memphis last night. They had no answer for him whatsoever. If they decide they're going to put another body on him because he starts coming out shooting hot again, or they just try to really run him down, you're going to see his assist total pick up a lot because he's got the ball handling skills to handle that. So Johnson still becomes an excellent play, cut cash in GPP today. And if you're not comfortable taking a Memphis guy, and I don't blame any of you guys for not wanting Conley today, 
well then, Johnson is sitting right there and he's going to open up some salary for you guys that you can spend judiciously how you like. Uh, going down the lineups, um, you know, Ramon Sessions might get some extra time today if Batum is out. You know, a lot of the Charlotte pickup guys might, but I would just kind of stay away from those people for the moment until they show the breakout that you need, even when they have minute run. Uh, it's not worth jumping on the risk. This is a cash game lineup, so. Conley. Why did I take Conley? Well, guys, he played 24 minutes or so last night. He played like, you know, um, Embiid did because they wanted to rest him up on the second night of a back-to-back -back that's coming up. They wanted to basically let the, our man here get full run tonight. So you can expect Conley to go for 30 solid points today, maybe even 35. And if he does, if you look at his recent fantasy point per performance in terms of minutes played, his usage when he's on the court, you guys will be taking this choice and just finding a way to fit him in. I do believe a lot of people will have Conley today, which will be a surprise, but that they'll fade Westbrook out because they'll spend a little too much and they'll spend up for Harden and some other choices elsewhere today. The small forward position is a really iffy one, so, but I'll get on to there. Um, let's move on to shot guard. I have Clay Thompson today and KCP, Caldwell Pope. Um, both are the faster targeting, faster games that I'm targeting. OKC will let them score even if they score themselves. So you're going to find yourself in a position where KCP will probably put up a solid 30 points, which is a six times four a day. And that's just wonderful for holding your lank up in, you know, for a shot guard at only 5,100. Pretty much a lot for it almost when you look at his last two opponents, which were stronger defensive opponents that like to run slower versus OKC, which will run a faster pace. So you, you got to just be looking into these things and be happy. Um... I mean, taking Minnesota players against Golden State can turn into a wonderful thing when Draymond Green isn't in. There's a lot of rebounds and other peripherals that will open up. All right, so we have Klay Thompson on that Golden State side. That's also taking advantage of the Draymond Green likely absence at this point. You know, there'll just be a few extra minutes spread among their main three guys. They basically keep at least two of the three guys all the time. Dury, uh, Durant, Curry, and, um, and Clay. All three of those guys are, at least two of them are on the floor at all times. You guys can watch. Durant was finishing out the game last night. So, I've taken Clay today. I like that pick. I, I like having a, some Golden State exposure, although I'm going to bounce it on the other side a little bit more. Um, it's slightly contrarian, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to take advantage of the Draymond Green absence in a different way. Um... Okay, so we have KCP running against OKC. Now, I don't like play, taking players that have Detroit as an opponent, almost like when they have Memphis as an opponent, especially in certain positions because they don't score as well against Detroit. Detroit's been very strong at keeping away peripheral stuff. Um, Drummond seems to knock a lot away right from the board, to be honest. Um, other guys in, that get close to the board with Drummond can see slight upticks, you know. Um, I'll mention that later, but... You have to really read into these games carefully to see who might pick up the extra additional stats that you really need to bounce your fantasy score along. Um, your other choices today, I mean, look at the 6,000 level. It is loaded. If you don't like Clay Thompson today for some reason, you got Brad Beal, who could put up a surprise game against San Antonio. There is no issue with that. Let's say San Antonio decides to get real tough on guarding Wall. I don't think that Pops will do that, and I don't think he'll run a double team, but... Whoever ends up picking up on to Beal, um, well, you know, most of their guys are pretty good on defense. I would say Beal isn't the ideal spot today, but the thing is, anyone that can put up 40 points on a night with a ceiling becomes a tournament play, and he can. It just takes a couple extra buckets that land for him, a couple extra peripherals, and he's there. Depot. Uh, that's uh, that's the perfect example of an opponent that goes against Detroit. Look at his game log, see how he did last time, guys, with the same kind of minute run. And you guys tell me if you want to take him again tonight. Because you basically have to triple what he did the last time against him. To have, uh, OKC will run through Durant instead. And, you know, if, if they kind of key in on Durant, then o Depot will probably pick up some more than we're expecting. But I don't see that. Durant's such a strong force, they're probably still going to have to focus on him. Um... All right, that's pretty much going through the position. The cheap end, 
Richardson, if Drajic is out again, you can definitely be looking at him. Um, I think that there might be some minute adjustment there on the back end of a day-to-day, -day, and he got less minutes in the last game. And, uh, who, I'm forgetting who the other guy was that got hot, but so they left him in, basically. I'll get to him because I haven't seen him yet. Um, Magruder will probably lose some minutes in the back end of that, especially if Drajic comes back. You guys got to watch that Drajic news. Drajic may be back. We're not sure yet. We've done that one. All right, small forward, we've got Carmelo and we got Wiggins. Now, Carmelo might look like point chasing, guys, but I'm going to tell you this. Do you want to take Durant today when he's projected to put up about 45 points at $10,000? Do you want to take Kwame Leonard today, who looks a lot better to me if you have the money for it? I would be paying for Kwame over Durant today. It's just my own personal opinion. I don't know why, but... I mean, Durant could actually see extra minutes today with Draymond Green out. Normally, when the coaches are running their rotations in the game, Green goes out for Durant, and Durant goes back in for Green, and they just swap back and forth. If Green is out today, I mean, Durant would look like a solid beneficiary of extra minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I would say you could take Durant. I mean, he's a GPP play, no question. For cash, though, I would stay away. Um, Kwame Leonard... You can definitely spend up there. I think it's a nice, solid position against Washington because they run faster. They might drag San Antonio along with them, and he still pulls 40, 45 fantasy points against slower teams. He's looking around a 45, 50 run today, which could be very nice. I think you can get that same 45, 50 run out of Carmelo Anthony today. Melo put up, what, 65, 70 fantasy points in the last game. He's not going to do it again, guys, Okay. Expecting these repeats when they're so rare from these people and you look at their game logs, it doesn't happen. But we literally have a game where it's the same opponent, it's the next night, and now he's away. So he's going to drop, but he's still going to be the force of the team. They're going to remember last night. Basketball players have short memories. DFS players do too, and we take advantage of that. But... You know, this is the game we're talking about. If they're going to have a short memory and remember that, you know, I should pass to Carmelo right now because he's going to score, you know he's going to see an increased usage than he normally does, which is going to translate directly into extra fantasy points. Melo is a solid 40 points for you guys today. So just take it. Yeah, it's not the 68 he got yesterday. So even though it looks like it's minute chasing, this is smart minute chasing. Or point chasing. Uh, moving on through the position, uh, Wiggins is your next one because like, then it goes to Porter, and I've already selected Wiggins. Um, I'm just positive that like Wiggins should see some extra... Uh, he, he's due for a nice, good game against Golden State. And I know this guy has a floor of 15 points, and he's got pickup of 55. So, I mean, there are... If he comes out slow again, it's bad. But if Draymond Green isn't playing, one of their nice defensive hands is not is out, you're going to basically see Wiggins and Deang be beneficiaries. And Conley is too, I believe. I think today is a good day to take some Minnesota players. I don't ever really stack in more than four because it puts a lot of exposure on one team to me. But I'll take what looks like to be their three main scorers today. So Conley, Wiggins, and Deang. So that's your small forward position. Um, the other choices... Porter is a GPP play all the time now with his 68-point game before, but as you guys can see, it was almost like a flash in the pan. It doesn't, doesn't Things aren't happening. Winslow's coming into game-time decision. That's going to start affecting Miami value. And Bellinelli. Um, if Shacharva gets hot at home against the Knicks versus yesterday's game, which was like tied and then it went into overtime, Bellinelli is their three-point shooter. That's why they got him, guys. And threes are, they're worth actually three and a half on DraftKings, which makes him even better pick over there. But on this site, you know, if you think he can rail some more threes tonight at home, well, dude, that's a screaming value at 4,200 because he'll pay off at seven times or more. GPP pick, for sure. Same with Johnson with Miami. He's going to be a GPP pick because you're not, you got the Drogic news you're looking on still. Um, and the Waiters, but I mean, Waiters is playing now, so that changes things up a bit. Robertson has flashes of good names, but not enough to be consistently banking him unless it's an excellent opponent. Grant's opponent isn't wonderful unless you're a stud today like Westbrook. Um, and that's about it for the small forward position. We started at power forward. We had Diang. 
Draymond Green appears to be game time decision. I'd say that's more doubtful at this point. Zebo, it says game time decision. He's definitely out. He's taking care of his mother's passing. Um, so your real choices now are Porzingis, Aldridge. Um, Aldridge, when Leonard's going to probably soak up the scoring, and San Antonio will still slow down the fast Wizards. It's going to be a tough game to play on in that sense. And honestly, the Wizards coach likes to rest his guys. The San Antonio coach likes to rest guys. So, I mean, the whole game, to me, smells a lot like an avoid the game. I mean, one or two guys could come out great. Leonard, in particular, is the only name that comes to mind. But, um, Dieng, I like the spot against Golden State. I just, there's nothing else to say, to say there. They're going to run fast. Golden State gets 120. Minnesota gets 110 and hangs with them. So, Dieng pulls 35 points in that kind of a game. There's your six times value. Frank Kaminsky is going to be in play in Charlotte with the two injuries with um, Williams. And, Williams is definitely out, so Kaminsky's will come in for that. So he's definitely still in play. Batum can come into play too. Problem with Kaminsky, guys, just look at his run, what he does with his minutes. You can see in FanDuel in particular. I mean, you don't have a screaming ceiling. You're not going to get 45 points from Kaminsky ever. If he gives you a solid 30 points for 4,600, that's six and a half times value. You're, you're pleased to the, as hell with that, so no worries. But the last game he played against New York, which was yesterday, and now he's on a back-to-back, -back, he put in 40 minutes in an overtime, but still 40 minutes, and he only pulled out 27 points. Two of his turnovers, guys, were traveling. So, you guys tell me. I don't think he does enough with the minutes in this follow-up game back-to-back -to, -back to be worth it. Almost everyone is in a back-to-back, -back, which kind of sucks. Um, scrolling down, we got Lauer. Lauer has just been put... Oh, that's David Lee. Excuse me, guys. Lauer's been putting up good minutes, and this is against OKC, which will run faster. It's the same kind of contrarian play. Look how he did against the Clippers just yesterday. Now, and that wasn't a, an insane minute run either. I like Lauer today. The only question was, you know, what did I have the money to spend on? And I had the money to spend a little bit more. I went ahead and took Harris today because, again, I like the position against OKC. So it's... You know, these things kind of tie into each other when I talk about them, so I like when I can do that. It just makes this so much of a simpler game to play. All right, so we got Harris, and he shows more upside as well than Camille, so, or, than Lauer. And finish off with Zeller. You need someone to fit into the center position, and if the Batum injury does come through and Zeller saw basically, you know, a nice full run of minutes, you know, the coach doesn't seem to mind running in for it, like, even after he's gotten back from an absence. So you got 23 minutes there with 24 fantasy points. I mean, he's going to be the guy that's been rested a bit, so I'm expecting he plays 30 minutes tonight, picks up even more of that little point load, and we see a nice 30-point performance out of him, which is wonderful for your 45. Now, does he need... No, all he needs to do is floor me at 22 and a half, and I've done my job for a cash game. Okay, so let's go ahead and review the lineups real fast for today as I've gone through all the... Oh, I didn't go through center. Um, Towns is your best choice at the top. Avoid Whiteside, especially against the Memphis Hornets. He's had two cold games in a row, and there's no reason it shouldn't be three after playing them. Um, K Towns, great spot. I just like him for 40 points tonight and not 60. He could do 60. He's got the most upside of anyone besides Westbrook today, but I prefer Westbrook if you're going to spend the money. Um, Drummond, yes. Gasol is steady. The first Gasol. Um, he'll have a steady 30, 35 point range just every day. Um, Pal Gasol is not so steady, but he's got the Wizards opponent, so it depends on what Pops does with the minutes over there. It's such a mess. So hard to figure him out, and I think he does that on purpose. Um, Adams with OKC against Detroit, although he put up a stinker the last time he played him, and I don't see him doing a lot better this time around. Joe King Noah is probably going to have a minutes restriction, which brings us to Zeller. And there ain't much more down you can spend, guys. So, your optimal cash game lineup for FanDuel for today is and these are cash games if you can see at the top it's in a one dollar double up if you run these in gpps this is your own risk they have upside but i'm looking for floors 
you have to play these in cash games. If you have questions about what they are, I'm going to do another special edition video soon as to what the difference is between cash game playing and what the difference is between GPP playing and when you choose, how you know a player is cash or GPP. We're going to have a special video on that. Um, give me a thumbs up if you want to see that soon. I'll do my best to get it out there. Okay, um, let's move on to DraftKings real fast. I'm going to tell you guys... DraftKings, I'm dropping in the middle because most people expect in the last two minutes of the video to come and see a FanDuel lineup. But we're also going to do this for DraftKings now. And DraftKings lineups, you'll see that there's similarity in mine because they're based in the same way. You're, I'm not playing money on these. I'm letting you guys know. Because I only play FanDuel and I'm still working out whether I can get my scoring systems in my head to adapt to the way um, DraftKings works. There's different scoring rules. Like with three pointers, you get three and a half points. A guy like Bellinelli is going to be a better pick today if you think he's going to land three pointers on DraftKings than he is on FanDuel. There's no question about it. You can even take um, my Cody Zeller 4000 pick there, move around the center with the utility position, and you can pick him up. All right, so this is going to be our first recommended cash game lineup for DraftKings. And this is a cash game only. So for cash games on DraftKings, Westbrook and Johnson. Westbrook at the point guard. Johnson at the shot guard, and that's Tyler Johnson, the 4,800 for Miami. Um, Mello for small forward. Sabonis for your power forward at 3,300. Zeller at your center for 4000 I think that's a great buy on DraftKings. Levine for your guard at 6000 Now you can play around with that a little bit. I feel that was almost tournament-y a little bit. But I found that the pricing structure is very difficult to fit and maintain a balanced cash game lineup. So we're going to take Levine today. Leonard, once again, with his nice spot that I mentioned, and he will see a couple extra points on DraftKings versus FanDuel. Um, these are scoring adjustments that I've made in my own head to whether a guy... You, you might see a guy here that's not on FanDuel. There's a reason. Leonard for your extra forward, and Joe Johnson. So you're, out, you're basically taking both the Johnson from Miami today at your utility spot. Okay, that's your recommended DraftKings cash game lineup. Your recommended FanDuel cash game lineup. Westbrook and Conley at the point guard positions. Clay Thompson and Caldwell Pelp at the shot guard positions. Carmelo and Wiggins at the small forward today. Dieng and Harris at the power forward today. And Cody Zeller for your center. Thank you guys so much for watching Fantasy Forecast. Please give drop a big like on the video if you like, you know, what the lineup is. You know, thumbs down it or drop a comment below if you don't like it or you've got questions. I try to answer them once a day before lock, and if I'm not able to make it, at least once a day on every video. If it's an older video you comment on, then it takes me a while to comment back on those. But I do get to just about everything at some point. You'll find a Twitter link for me in the description on this video. Go ahead and click there and follow me on Twitter for last-minute lineup changes. I do encourage that. If you want personalized advice from me, Drop me a Twitter message, and I will actually respond to you on Twitter. And if you haven't subscribed yet, guys, please subscribe to these videos. It's what supports this free channel and lets me continue doing it for all of you guys. Everyone wants me to do premium lineups. I've been asked it multiple times, and no matter what, even if I do, I will always do a free video for you guys every day that I see a good cash game lineup out there. All right. That's it for Fantasy Forecast for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Go on out there and go win some big money.